Hi, my name is Tamer El Hosseini. I'm a consultant urologist at Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust. Uh, I look after people with urinary problems, uh, including problems with the kidneys, ureters, bladders, and prostates. Kidneys are two bean-shaped organs. They measure about 10 centimeters each, and they are located um, on each side of the spine towards the back. Uh, the main function of the kidney is to get rid of the waste products in the body. So the blood goes through the kidney, and the waste products are excreted into the urine and the clean blood is returned back again into the body. Kidney stones are a very common problem. They normally occur in about 1 in 10 people. We normally see them in patients aged between 30 to 60, but on some occasions we see it in younger patients and on other occasions we see it in elderly patients. Waste products in the blood can form crystals in the urine and these crystals in the urine can attach to each other and form a kidney stone. You're more likely to get a kidney stone if you are generally dehydrated and you don't drink enough fluids or if you are taking some particular regular medications or in certain medical conditions such as obesity, hypertension, diabetes, Crohn's disease and people who have undergone previous bariatric surgeries. Also, family history is an important factor in kidney stones. Some people who had positive family history for kidney stones are also more likely to get kidney stones in the future. The majority of kidney stones, usually if they are small, will pass unnoticed, and that's usually for stones that are smaller than 5 millimeters. Larger stones can sometimes produce symptoms when they are coming out in the urine, and these symptoms could be in the form of pain, infections, fever, blood in the urine, and in advanced cases, if the stones are left untreated, that could cause a blockage to the kidney and can cause long-term damage to the kidney function. Most kidney stones, if they are small, they will pass naturally in the urine. We would normally advise people who have got a small kidney stone to drink plenty of fluids and we would normally advise them to drink between two and a half to three litres per day. A useful tip for people who have got a small kidney stone would normally be to try and drink plenty of fluids, usually between two and a half to three litres per day, and trying to keep the urine colourless as much as possible. We would also advise people with kidney stones to cut down on the intake of salt in their diet and also cut down on the intake of animal protein, especially red meat. Larger kidney stones would usually require treatment in the hospital and this could be performed by three methods. The first one is the extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy or what we call the ESWL or the lithotripsy treatment. This is a non-invasive treatment that's done as an outpatient. It doesn't involve any anesthesia, so it only involves giving you some painkillers before the treatment session. The treatment normally takes about 45 minutes and you would usually attend to the treatment session and after the treatment session is, is finished, you would normally go home. You'd normally be expected to return back to your daily regular activities within hours. The treatment uses the technology of sound waves that is used to break kidney stones into smaller pieces and then these smaller pieces of kidney stones would spontaneously or naturally pass in the urine. The second option to treat kidney stones is called urethroscopy and this is an operation that's performed under general anesthesia. It normally takes about 45 minutes to an hour and it's performed as a day case surgery so you normally attend to the hospital on the day, have it done and go home later on the same day. It involves putting a small telescope down through the water pipe, that's the urethra, into the bladder and up into the ureter and also into the kidney if needed, and utilizes the laser technology through a small laser fiber that goes through the telescope to break kidney stones that are then removed afterwards. The operation normally takes between 45 minutes to an hour, and you would normally be expected to return back to your daily activities within a couple of days after the proceeding. The final option is an operation called the PCNL or the percutaneous nephrolithotomy. The PCNL is a keyhole surgery that involves um, doing a small incision about one centimeter around the back area. Through that incision, a camera is passed into the kidney and we break the stone using a special device. And then the stone fragments are then removed afterwards. The operation takes about one to two hours and it's performed under general anesthesia and you'd be expected to stay in the hospital for about one to two days after the operation, and you'd normally expect to make a full recovery and back to your normal activities within a week from surgery. Unfortunately, kidney stones could recur, and we normally see kidney stones coming back in up to about 50% of patients who had a kidney stone within the first five years of forming one. We would normally advise people who had a kidney stone to make sure that they are well hydrated and would normally advise them to drink between two and a half to three liters per day to cut down the risk of future stones coming back 
and also to cut down on the intake of salt in their food and also cut down on the intake of animal proteins, especially red meat. Some patients who experience forming stones more regularly or patients who have strong family history or developed kidney stones at an earlier age might require additional testings to see if there is any abnormalities that are leading to these stones forming more quickly. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video useful.